Hi, Steve Clifford from Sheehy Toyota of Fredericksburg, Virginia. Visit us at SheehyToyotaFredericksburg.com. So I'm finding out now that I've changed my role from being a training manager to being a sales manager, I'm talking to a lot more customers nowadays, and I'm realizing that there is still a huge amount of misinformation out there and just basic lack of understanding about what hybrid systems are what they do so i'm going to try and demystify some of this and let me first of all say that everything that i'm, that I'm going to talk about applies to toyota hybrid systems it may apply to other manufacturers hybrid systems but i've also discovered that not all hybrid systems are built the same and there are some manufacturers out there that are making some really really weird choices with their hybrids i know because I get to drive them as trade-ins and there are some manufacturers that don't do this right but i'm going to show you the toyota systems so the number one misconception that people have is that you somehow need infrastructure or a plug to run a hybrid number no no you don't you can fill this thing with gas you can drive and just like you do a regular gas only car even the plug-in hybrids, you don't have to plug them in. And I'm going to explain that in a second. I'm going to talk about what that is. But let's just go over and review what hybrid systems are and what your expectations should be when you buy one. So this is a Toyota Crown. This is a the regular Toyota hybrid system. This is a fifth generation version of what was basically the Prius. Now, the gas engine has gotten much bigger. The electric motors have gotten bigger, but it's the same system that was on the original Prius all the way back in 2001 model year, and even earlier than that, dating back to 1997 in Japan. You've got a gas engine, you have two electric motors, both of them combine their power into what is called a power split device. Some people refer to it as a transmission, technically it's not. The transmission or the power split device on these is ridiculously reliable you don't see these going out you need to service them every now and then but my goodness in the last 26 years that we've had these things our dealership which is a moderate to large size dealership i think has replaced two hybrid transmissions they just they're almost impossible to break nothing is completely foolproof but it's awesome anyway they combine their power to output in the in the in the front wheels front wheels only this particular car is a an all-wheel drive but there's no differential there's no drive shaft it's got a third electric motor that is sitting back in above the rear axle so that's how the four-wheel drive system or all-wheel drive system works how does it charge the batteries well there's nothing you need to do as a consumer the gas engine operates as a generator. It goes through the inverter converter and sends power back to the batteries as needed. It also charges the batteries every time you hit the brakes. The brakes have what's called regenerative, which means that these brake pads only touch the brake disc in two situations. Number one, in an emergency, and number two, when the car slows below seven miles an hour. You get almost no brake wear out of this thing. That's why the brakes on hybrids tend to last in excess of 150,000 miles, depending on usage. But this is the same system that we've had since the Prius came out. Unbelievably reliable. Fantastic system. Uh, they're much more powerful than they used to be. The original Priuses were, let's face it, a bit slow. Of course, back in 2001, everything was a lot slower, so we didn't notice it quite as bad. But yeah, now it runs really, really well. This is a quick car. So now let's look at the second hybrid system, the plug-in hybrids, like this one. This is a Prius. This is a Prius plug-in. They used to call it the Prime. They just call it the plug-in now to somehow alleviate confusion. You'll notice that it has an extra fuel door. You've got one on the passenger side in addition to the one on the driver's side. That's because this one is an actual fuel door. The other one is for charging. You have a charge port there. This car comes with 
a charging cable. Now, first thing, do you need to use the charging cable? Absolutely not. You could drive this car and never plug it in, ever. You wouldn't get all the benefits out of it, uh, but you could do it. Your gas mileage is going to be about the same. Now, Twitter claims that you don't get as good a gas mileage because of the extra weight. Although the people that I have spoken to have told me that in the real world is actually doing considerably better. But Twitter says it doesn't get as good a gas mileage because of the extra weight because you have much, much bigger batteries. But it comes with this charging cable. This charging cable, you can plug in at your house. It has two dongles. One dongle has a 120 volt three prong outlet. You can just plug that in in your garage, charge this thing overnight. It also comes with this dongle, which is a two, uh, yeah, 240 volt. And if you have the correct outlet in your garage, you can plug that in. That'll charge it in just a couple of hours. So that comes with the car. When you charge it, you're going to get a about between 30 to 40 miles on a full charge and that's the all electric range but and a lot of people get twisted around the axle say oh my goodness that's only 40 miles that's a very short range well no <laughs> that's how far the range is all electric then it becomes a hybrid just like every other hybrid that we have every camry uh, every sienna Every crown is hybrid only. This Prius plug-in becomes just a regular Prius when you don't have a full charge on the batteries. So no big deal. Just every time you plug in, you've got 30 to 40 miles, depending on ambient conditions and how you drive it. And that's how that works. Other than that, everything that applies to the first hybrid system applies to this one. Now, Toyota also came up with a different hybrid system completely. It is called the Max Hybrid System, and you'll see it a couple of different ways. You'll see it referred to as the Max Hybrid or the iForce Max Hybrid, like this. Now, this thing operates on a completely different principle. This is not here for fuel efficiency. This is here for absolute raw power. Anytime you see the Max logo, understand this is not a Prius system. This does not have that ECVT power split device system for a transmission. It does not have two electric motors. It doesn't have a third electric motor sitting over the rear axle. This thing has, in this case, this is a twin turbo V6. You also will find it on the Land Cruiser and the Full Runners with a four cylinder turbo. Same thing on the uh, Crown Platinum and the Grand Highlander Hybrid with the Max system. Those are four cylinders, those are turbocharged engines. You have the gas engine, which is turbocharged. And if you know anything about turbos, you know there's something called turbo lag. That means that you don't get all of its torque right away. The engine has to spool up, get those turbos spinning to get that forced induction to get you the extra boost. But you also have one very large electric motor in line after the, after the gas engine on the crankshaft connected to it with a wet clutch system that one large electric motor provides a huge amount of torque and that torque is provided to an eight or in this case on the tundras a 10 speed automatic direct shift transmission so now that electric motor gives you all of its torque instantaneously loads and loads of power that is that initial boost that you feel as you wind up our engine RPMs, then the turbos kick in and the turbos are doing their jobs to get you even more power. This thing is amazing. It is, has an intoxicating level of torque. There's just torque everywhere. I drive a Land Cruiser. That's my personal vehicle. And even driving up in the mountains, if I'm going up a hill, if I need power immediately, it's right there. 
but it's very unassuming. If, you, if you're not asking for the power, it's not going to snap your neck back. It's not going to feel like it's going to trying to kill you, but it's there when you need it. So it is a hybrid system because it does have the regenerative brakes. It has batteries that need charged, and those batteries are powering an electric motor. It has an inverter converter, but not the eCVT system that is on the rest of the hybrid systems. So those are the different hybrid systems Toyota makes. You've got a conventional hybrid that is based on the old Prius system. You have the plug-in hybrids, which is on that Prius. And you have the MAX system, both the both the iForce Max and the regular Max, depending on which vehicle you're looking at. And all of them use gasoline. All of them do not require any infrastructure. They don't require anything plugged in. Uh, you just put gas in them, start it, and go, just like any other car. The only thing that is really different that you're going to notice is the engine start-stop system. That's something that a lot of people absolutely hate about conventional gas engine. You pull to a, to a traffic light, the gas engine turns off, take your foot off the brake, uh, the engine starts. People hate that, and with good reason, and I don't blame you. Hybrids have that, but in a really different way, in a real seamless way. They don't have starters. They start using the electric motor so that you don't have that, that constant cranking of the engine. Uh, it's a very different feeling. It is seamless and it won't irritate you. So understand that it's there, but it's not the same system that you hate so much with the engine start stop features that are so common nowadays. I hope this helps demystify some of the things about hybrid systems in general and Toyotas more specifically. I'm Steve Clifford. Thank you for watching.